Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me change the view. I already yeah. got it recording. I pressed it mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, shit. Uh-huh. It just started recording. <laughs> I was like, no, no, yeah, no yeah. Uh, warning, huh? No, no, I don't know. no warning at all. And also, also, I changed the lighting in my, my yeah. room slash office here. Makes my face look fat on camera. I'm just like, <laughs> I look like. Yeah. You look happy. You know? I know. I know. Yeah. What the yeah. hell, man? Uh, it doesn't look anything like me. That's funny. At all. I know. Strange. That's what's up. What, what What's the lighting change? What happened? Uh, we just have a, a lamp here instead. Because oh, I found so out. Weird. You know what? I found out these uh, recording studio lights were wilting my plants. And yeah. I was I was wondering what was going on. I was like, because I thought it was a blast of uh, light from, you know, the room next door or the hallway or whatever. Mm-hmm. But a couple of times I've ac- accidentally gone to sleep and left the dang ring light on. Mm-hmm. And I, I came back this last time and my plants were wilted. And they don't like that. They don't. Yeah. I'm telling you, new technology, they can mass produce this stuff, but it's not healthy for you. Right. Yeah. No, that's, so, you know, it just be yeah. affecting you like I, that. Yeah. I uh, bought a, bought a grow light now. What's uh, that? It's, uh, it's the bulb that is the frequency that plants like. Oh, okay. It's yeah. Plants. I mean, they have a couple of, yeah, they have a couple of kinds of frequencies. So yeah, the, the plants are liking this. Nice. Yeah. That's what's anyway, up, man. What's been going on? Did you know this podcast is canceled? What do you mean? <laughs> they, so they don't, wherever it was hosted, they don't do it anymore? Nah, man. Um, I I didn't re-up the hosting. No. Oh. <laughs> I've been paying um, for Captivate. Captivate was the host of the podcast. Mm. And just last month, and because we haven't talked since, I think the last time it was like the end of February. Uh-huh. Like the Blue Shades thing, uh-huh. uh, Blue Shades tour for yeah. um, my book. But yeah, it came due and I I made the decision in like in like 20 minutes. I was like, uh-huh. because I thought of it from like a business perspective, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's unfortunate because I love the medium of podcasting, like yeah, pure yeah, podcasting. Yeah. I love just being behind the mic, audio, you know, what uh-huh. we're doing now, but unfortunately like a lot of things that have happened these days podcasting has become a video medium it's mm-hmm. basically like evolved so when a lot of people talk about having a podcast now it's basically like a youtube channel yeah uh, it's basically gotcha. a series of videos gotcha. so yeah yeah pure audio podcasts they exist there's a lot of them but yeah. they're not as popular just because YouTube is so big and video is so mm. huge. Mm. And it was just like, and even this podcast, right? I started posting the videos yeah. and I was getting away. For, so bottom line is, yeah, I decided not to re-up my hosting, which yeah. meant I had to cancel all of my podcasts, including oh, Sirius including and Limnick. And Limnick. Oh. Yeah, I had to take it down. Um mm. Mm. And I was trying to find a way because, and that's another yeah. thing that sucks about audio is that, yeah, maybe you don't know this and people don't know this, but hosting video is much easier than hosting audio online mm. in general. Like there yeah. are a few audio hosting and sharing services, but mm-hmm. all the social media platforms um, and websites in general, they're all optimized to host video, not audio, mm. not pure audio. So you can like move individual files over, but it gets big really fast. And yeah. unlike video, I can upload videos all day to YouTube and just yeah. share links. Pretty much the entire internet is yeah. wired to accept YouTube links or Vimeo mm. or whatever you're using. But mm. with podcasting, you're using like old school RSS feeds and then you have to get into the code. You have to go through all this or, you know, you have to get a very yeah, like the player sitting right. on the website. To... Exactly. Mm. And even though that came before videos, videos are just so popular now yeah, that yeah. audio mm. is just kind of this old format for the web, like mm. old in mm-hmm. the, you know, in web years. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I've looked at it up and down sideways and I was like, yeah, there's no way for me to host this without basically paying for another hosting yeah. provider yeah or like just 
making audio clips and hosting it myself and busting my website limit. Mm-hmm. So it, it just wasn't, it wasn't feasible. And I was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm just going to do this. So yeah. Um, of course we're not completely canceled. We're still doing the show. We're doing it now. Yeah. We're, we're speaking into the wind, whatever. <laughs> right. And it's still on my YouTube channel. Don't worry if you are a regular <laughs> listener, our 10 yeah, regular yeah. listeners that we have, if it's yeah, even whatever. 10, um, then and, and, you, and to, to you know to to kind of show you how how uh, ready I am for the public. <laughs> you see me at home with my I'm all raggedy sitting up here like no, you look like you comfortable. I, I look mean, like a bum. Yeah, you look like you comfortable at home. You I am comfortable at home. I am comfortable. I'm very very. Nice. I got my 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 crinkled the. Uh, crinkled uh sheet in the back so just in case the dogs come right. in they can make an appearance and everything yeah, yeah. and then you're oh, sipping well. on something what, what what is that this is an unknown beverage <laughs> which is not going to get free product placement <laughs> good <laughs> so so i have stripped off labels you really stripped it <laughs> i stripped off the label and covered it with painter's tape because i love that because no man because hey. this beverage is not hey no free shot. In any way, it, it is not in any way anything. <laughs> it, it, it's just water. It's yeah, it's just water. It'll be water. Just green water, you know. It's <laughs> funny, man. The links that I didn't even know that. Have you done that before? Never. No. And, and that's because normally I don't come up here with a thing shaped like a damn beer bottle. Usually I have my cup. And you don't know what's in my cup. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. But this looks like a beer bottle. So it, it I mean, you know, in Europe, you know, they'd be having them the gas water that looks like that. Yeah. Water with yeah. gas, no gas. <laughs> could be gas water. It could be. Yeah, we'll say that's what it is. Gas water in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia gas. <laughs> Well, man, what, what's no, man, going I, on? I understand. I understand, though, as far as all that stuff is concerned, because it's, I don't know. No, I feel you. I feel you. I, I'm the same way. Like, I, that's the reason why I don't, I use a lot of different products. And sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll name certain things. Like, I just yeah, yeah, mentioned yeah. Captivate. It's stuff that I like. But yeah, certain things, I, you know, I'm not trying to give a shine, you know? No. Because no, people really. be getting free shine. I think that's something people don't realize. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. when you're sitting there complaining about something. Like people complaining about Donald Trump or Elon mm-hmm. Musk, or you are giving them shine, giving that full advertisement, yeah. right? Yeah. They're loving you, because... and, and you 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 so small on their radar. They ain't nothing. All you are, their... are you always a mention? Exactly. Who cares if you don't like, you know, a lot of people don't like, do like, whatever. As long as right. it was just one more mention, that's it. Free marketing, free marketing, that's and that's how it. a lot of people nowadays on social media, unfortunately, they operate that way. Look, the best way to how the you best way to fight me. something you don't like. Yep. To not let mention it, it. Let it die. Let it die. Don't let That's it pass right. through your lips and don't exactly. let it pass through your mind if you can. I mean, you could you could give it a bad review and depending on yeah. the product, of course, you know, you could really For cripple sure. it. But, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately, that that really hurts really smaller people. The bad right. review. Because, I mean, like yeah. like bigger, bigger institutions. How many people be giving Walmart a bad review? <laughs> How how many times has Amazon and Microsoft been sued? Right, right. I mean, they they ain't going anywhere. It doesn't matter how many they times you. Oh, I hate there. this thing. Uh, you know, I was uh. So as far as what's going on with me recently, I, we went to Home Depot. Oh yeah, we're we're getting ready to work on a bathroom here. Oh nice. So finally, finally, gonna try to get a shower in the house because we have not had that. We've had what's well, not? No, wait a minute. We've had showers, but we don't have a tub. The old school mm, sit yeah, back regular. with a tub. I mean. So we're trying to finally build that in. And I went to Home Depot, had to tra- travel all the way basically to Savannah in order to get to the Home Depot and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's that's been an adventure shopping for for like home yeah. home things. And I, I bring this yeah. up because, uh, you know, you run into the usual thing with reviews. Yep. And, uh, I, I, you know, I don't get why people leave a bad review over the shipping company. And I mean, I, know, I guess you got to take out your frustration on something, right. but I was trying to look up yeah, that's floor tile and bathroom products and it's got a one. I was like, what is it brittle? Does it crack? They're mm-hmm. like, the shipping person was late or the box right. was. They looked like, at me funny. 
Yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, this isn't really a genuine one. You know, right? Yeah. So it's really annoying. Yeah. People be getting um, that with their books too. Like I've been, I've mm -hmm. been going on to Threads uh, recently, and Threads is, is is basically a bunch of authors. That's newer, right? Yeah, it's newer. It's the new one mm -hmm. uh, from Meta, and it's just uh, basically I've been lumped in because yeah, I'm an author. Yeah, and my account's still pretty new, and I don't use it that much. But yeah, I've been lumped in with all these other authors, and they just go on there and complain about stuff. Oh, they yeah. whine about no. people giving them lower views and all the stuff. And I feel for them too, because you know I'm, mm -hmm. I'm an author as well, and you know I've gone through a lot of the same stuff. But yeah, my my main one of my big rules of social media is never complain in public. <laughs> oh, because what yeah, does it yeah. do like mm -hmm. even if people go oh there there i'm sorry that happened to you mm -hmm. it's it's fucking useless yeah it, yeah, it yeah. doesn't do anything you know like yeah. i mean i don't know you like you're you know you're yeah consoling me doesn't do anything for me just going i mean some people use it as catharsis but it's complaints mm -hmm. a lot and i bring it up because this is one of those things that people will get one starred on their books because yeah. oh, it, oh it, it rained and it got left out and what well, well, yeah one star in the, but yeah that's 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 cold you know man. or it the, is. the worst one star yeah. or three star review is when something happens in the book that the reader that didn't the like. reader didn't like yeah oh he died at the end yeah one she star. didn't get the guy at the end yeah. that's stupid one yeah. star yeah, you know, like people be one star in and, and they don't it, so you so you know I'm 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 invisible when it comes to access. I d I don't know what the state of my work out there is. I don't know what I I've let a couple of my website hosts things things die too. They're mm -hmm. just sitting out there. Somebody probably claimed the domain and mm -hmm. my LinkedIn is old as shit. And <laughs> I haven't seen you on you yet. know, you know, you know my LinkedIn You're a ghost. I'm a ghost, man. I'm yeah. a ghost, man. My, my my LinkedIn is uh I mean, it's, it exists. It's free. It's, it's under the free account. I don't touch the thing. Right. But, but yeah, man, I, to this day, I don't know what people are saying about my work. And yeah. I'm getting ready to, so good news, I'm getting ready to finish Laurentia second edition. Nice. And I am, oh man, I am, it's a work of discipline to edit second yeah. round 20 pages a day because it's mm -hmm. a dictionary, man. Yeah, yeah. And it like, I'm, I'm getting through it, but now that I'm reading it, I'm like, man, I, you know, some people who just can't communicate, right? <laughs> they just say it, they say it wrong, they dig themselves a hole. And, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to say offensive stuff in there. Mm -hmm. The problem is that it's, you know, it's, it's mostly a dictionary, yeah, basically. But because it used basically every word available and they come up multiple times scrambled, Sometimes, a lot of times, you get definitions which are possibly offensive because they right. their text mine had words yeah. that were possibly offensive mm -hmm. in there. And when I was going through these asteroids over the course of the last two years, when I interpreted, I said, okay, here are the top 10, top 15 words. There are two and a half offensive ones in there. And then there's a bunch of random adjectives and nouns. Yeah. How do I connect these? And lo and behold, the connected topic has some, you know, a tinge of the offensive in it. Mm -hmm. So... And it's it's unfortunate. I actually make a comment in the dictionary, you know, on methodology. And I say I say in the comment, like, one might ask, why are there so many of these kinds of definitions in there? I said, well, there's actually not any more than the normal. And if you do all the probabilities, you do all the math, it's really the same. The problem is that right. those words and those definitions jump out. Right. So Anyway, we're talking about one star reviews and also because I, I try to do the right thing at the very beginning of the book and and, uh, you know, ap apologize for if I sounded chauvinist in the first. And, and I don't know that people read this. What I think what I think is that people read the first edition and they liked it. Mm -hmm. But then I published Alma Mater and they found out that I was male. Right. And then they may not they may have looked at it differently. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is so chauvinist. I'm like, I, you know, yeah, yeah. It, I wasn't. It wasn't meant to be that at all. So at the very beginning, I actually talk about this. I say, you know, I'm a people watcher, and that's what the first edition was based on. I had these students. I had all these people whose charts I had. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, 
clients and stuff like that. And I aggregated it and I said, oh, this was the pattern of all these people. But I am a male. And so the people who interacted with me interacted with me in terms of my background. And so mm. what I observed was through the filter. Let me say it like this. If I had been Barbie mm. making these same observations, right. I would have made different observations. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I made the ones that I made. So this to me is just a scientific matter, right? So it's a matter of, of, of your perspective. I mean, I can't just, you know, put on the, put on the suit of somebody with, you know, different skin color, different sex yeah. or anything like that. So I can't change what I observed in terms of dynamics that I got. Right. And, and that's how the first edition was. I say this at the beginning of the second edition. I'm just like, yo, I, you know, I read, I published the first edition. I'm like, man, that could have been said more politically correctly. But then again, it wasn't what I saw. Right. So now that I'm doing the statistics, I say, well, maybe, uh, well, there's no maybe. The, the, the computer does not care at all. Right. The, ma yeah. the math, the matrices, the statistical methods don't care. Here's what they got. Here's their words. And it was my job to, to take those words and put a dictionary-like thing mm -hmm. behind it. And I still can't come out completely politically correct. <laughs> So, no, so not, as I'm you're... going through this, I'm just like, well, I, you know, it, 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 yeah. it, it is what it is. I mean, exactly. you hear that all the time. And it and, is what it is. It you is know, what it and, is. And I yeah. still, I think, I think, you know, this forum is a safe place to say something that, oh my God, it got me lambasted when I put it the first time on YouTube. Right. I had a recording. Um, I don't know if you remember why I'm a feminist. I, uh, yeah, I because I, because I still claim that. Oh, and you remember, people were mm -hmm. hateful, man. But people yeah, are like, yeah. they're yeah. purely, they're like mad ridiculous. Uh, you'll die alone, you effing, calling you all kinds of words. <laughs> just, I'm just like, no, no, that's one I got. That's the one I remember. Yeah, that's fine. You, you effing, oh my God, they went off. And it was really just like a couple of people before I took yeah. the video down. I said, look, this mm -hmm. is, this is clean. When my channel is really just about, it's it's about stats and astrology. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. You know, I'm not well, trying to do anything other than that. So, anyway, you know, I just and and to this day, and I say that again at the beginning of the second edition, I still claim, and I still believe that you know, I'm a fourth wave feminist mm -hmm. and then a second wave feminist, yeah. and it's one of those things that you can't you can't put into a book because people don't get it. They mm -hmm. think of feminine as female and therefore mm. biology right. they don't yeah. think as feminine as feminized as in blacks in a pretty prejudiced society mm. and so you're trying to express your culture and your culture is feminized mm. and so if you're not looking at it, it's just like the abolitionists and the prohibitionists right. and you know all, all these all these teams that basically had to team up like like they had to get together during both during civil rights and mm -hmm. during the civil war and stuff like that you 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 kept having this alliance right. of blacks and women right, why yeah. well it's, it's really obvious right it should be obvious yeah. why but even then uh i don't know man i'm i'm not trying to get on a soapbox but but like i said this is a pretty safe forum for me to talk about you know being mm -hmm. being a feminist um, but it is not biological feminism. And right, so I always say fourth wave and second wave because I don't really do third wave. Third wave is really kind of aggressive in my my mind. It's mm. it's girl power like in your face. And I just don't that is really more biological. Like I just don't mm. yeah, yeah. I mean, you respect what Beyonce's doing, but at the same time, I don't want my window smashed out. And I still remember that. And mm. there's a you know, I just I can't yeah, I know, connect I to the third it's wave. It's this aggressive style. Yeah, of, the, I've got the, to the put girl men stuff. down and yeah, the to put bring men down women is, up. Yeah, that's. I'm just uh, not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not feeling that way. Some, but yeah. but the stuff with where we're focusing on the environment and you no, know, we don't want to just jump into a new world war. I mean, we think right, about yeah. things, exactly. human trafficking, and yeah. stuff like that. That's that is stuff we weren't even on that second wave you say i got a seat at the table but you're still treating me like a piece of meat you still think i'm supposed to be your servant you still don't give me a voice at the table we still deal with that yeah, right of course. and so you know my thing is like i i i encountered this remarkable release by one of my favorite artists Aoife o'donovan and bluegrass and she just came out with a uh an album called all my friends and it's 
about women's suffrage. And I heard it the first time I bought it immediately. It was awesome because it's straight history, bro. Mm. It's, it's like nine tracks, 10 tracks of good bluegrass, but she's, she's basically telling the story leading up to suffrage from 1916, you know, all the way through. And he covers the modern age. And I mean, this is one of those things to where, I mean, it's easy to overlook because man, we don't do no history. We don't, we don't, most people don't, we don't, we don't think about how the times we live in are very similar to a hundred years prior and stuff like that, you know? No. And uh, I mean, hats off to Aoife O'Donovan to, to making a statement like that because it doesn't just speak to you know biological women it speaks to folks who didn't always have rights and still have their rights really kind of shat on and in some cases really mm -hmm. really like disrespected by the entire upper crust of a particular state for example right. the people yeah. who run you know texas and florida i mean what the fuck i mean I, I like i understand i live in georgia georgia's majority republican but but georgia don't don't like shit on humans the way Florida does it, you know what I'm saying? The way Texas does it. And I know we try not to get political, but at the same time, yo, you live in a place where one dude near the top can just recruit cronies. I'm not even talking about Donald Trump. Donald mm. Trump, he's a he's a he's a conduit. Mm. Yeah, Whatever. Sure. The humans need conduits. But I'm talking about the folks who like want to be in Donald Trump's like, pants. You know, and they just <laughs> like, they call themselves governors and stuff. Yeah. And you know, Trump's one thing. Mm -hmm. DeSantis is another. Like a whole whole nother. Abbott is another. And that's that that's not funny. You know, mm -hmm. those guys aren't those guys aren't funny. Yeah. Trump can be funny. Mm -hmm. I, I'm I'm kind of exaggerating, but but uh Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean I, I, I respect that he represents a side, he represents a voice. Even the whole Nazism, red hat, all that, oh, that's just something that we've seen in the early 1900s. We've seen it before. Mm -hmm. Okay, there, there needs to be an outlet. But to, you know, macho it up, bravado it up, and, and then try to, like, use the laws. Trump uses rhetoric. Okay, rhetoric mm -hmm. is what we do. But to actually, like, corrupt the laws mm -hmm. behind closed doors, yeah. just... Mm, Mm, what what a what a shame on our country because our country is I still believe the greatest in the world I still mm. believe that but anyway I got on the soapbox but what I'm trying to say is that when I claim to be a fourth wave or second wave feminist it's not yeah. about biology mm. it's about do you want somebody else making not just your decisions for you but like selfish decisions disregard right, for you yeah, do you yeah, want yeah. that do you want that in your life would you go and say hey neighbor you can just run my life make my decisions right, circumvent right. you know circumvent circumscribe my rights or anything like that this is not a plug for democrats at all i i, I could care less what i'm talking about is i like my personal freedom and i don't give my personal freedom away to anybody mm. and not at, we weren't always based on skin color or sex or leaning or whatever yeah. granted that personal freedom and yet now some clicks can just take it yeah and there's not enough of us who are learning how the system works right to just counterbalance it how are you going to let this 10% people do this right? right that's that might be partly on them but it's also partly on you mm -hmm. i'm trying to do my part by writing books and so so my 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 challenge to people listening to this are what are you doing and mm -hmm. hey if yeah, if yeah. if for sure whatever yeah. they're doing out there is working for you there you go you don't have to do anything right but if you got complaints right with, which most people do the way yeah which most people do right, right. if you got complaints yeah. about how the things are going i'm like okay what are you doing right. so i'm i'm liking the i'm liking what uh you know simone de beauvoir and 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 uh emmy koyama and those guys that's the second waiver and the fourth waiver mm -hmm. are you know what they've done and transhumanism and all that other stuff defining mm -hmm. your body gender fluid that that those are huge steps and and frankly the folks who are trying to take that um i won't say trying to take that because i don't i i'm you know i'm blessed to live in a majority very conservative place 
because we have friends, we know people, we're all balanced and everything like that. And mm. at the end, it just becomes model UN, right? Mm. You make your case, you sit down. Mm. Um, but, you know, my my case is like, like, I don't know, things could be better. Right. And, you know, folks like, you know, Ifo Donovan and stuff like that, they speak their piece and that's all you can ask for. Right. So anyway, man. I know that was a that was a thing that was a tirade, but but no, it's good. It's I, I good, feel man. like I, I feel like I did more. I think I feel like I did more duty for for feminism just now, right? Yeah. Than a lot of these people who who oh, assume no. that it's it's womanism only. It is. Yeah. Have done. When, they can sit it, in their chairs and say, "You're not a feminist." Fuck you. I'm like, okay, well, at least I just came on here and tried to tell people what it was. I what know. are you doing yeah. besides telling me "fuck you" from your from the other side of the video so no and it's good man put your money where your mouth is yeah a a lot of you know this this culture war these days um yeah it does become this men versus women thing and when people hear feminism they think yeah it's all about women and then there's a large group of people who when they hear that it's anti-men too yeah and that's what, I mean, but we got we got mothers, we have sinners, we have wives, we have daughters, right. you know, and no, it's not just about right. I mean, and, and you you as a woman don't want to beat up all men because you got sons. You know right. what I'm saying? And I as a man don't want to beat up all women or say, Oh, I have feminism I, because you know, we have women in our lives. That's just how right. we you know, that's right. how we do it. Yeah, and, and at the end of the day, you know, this whole thing I I go back to and, and I mentioned this in Series Alumnic too in my first novel that we need each other at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. We re- we really do, even now. And whether that comes from a biological woman or a trans woman or a biological man or a trans man, I think of it as energy. You know, we all, and yeah. I've mentioned this before on this podcast, you know, we all have the masculine and the feminine within yeah. us. It just manifests in different ways. Yeah. And in different times and different activities. And we have, you know, it's a balance. We have more or less. And some people feel it more than others. Some people don't feel it as much at all. It's just, there's this yeah. large spectrum of people. And that's that's the way I think of it as. Um, and I was thinking, as you were talking, I was thinking, t- I had two thoughts. One was the, that you put a, um, a disclaimer at the at the top of the book saying hey <laughs> i'm claiming this stuff and this is what it is and you essentially put a trigger warning have you heard of this uh, <laughs> word? have you heard of this trigger trigger warning no i have not heard of this okay so they call it a trigger warning i was just reading uh, this it, the threads oh uh, i shouldn't even go on there as much anymore because it's pretty <laughs> useless because every time i go yeah, on there yeah, i yeah. see one of these posts and i'm just like now trigger warnings you know, the people don't know is basically pretty much what Johnny said, you know, at the top of a book, you know, a book is going to have stuff that might be triggering to yeah. somebody that's going to read it. So you say this includes stuff about feminism, and this is me clarifying my stance on that. That's a big part of my book, whatever. I'm fine with that. And I've done that before, too, on episodes of Sirius and Lemnick, ones where I talk about suicide, where I talk about PTSD, where I really get into some gritty stuff and like some, okay, this is, I know people that have experienced this before. The problem with trigger warnings is that you could take it too far. Yeah. And I saw on, um, it was a, it was a threads post that this, this woman had posted and she was an author and she was like, Look, I feel like this is, uh, should I put everything as a trigger warning? Because uh-huh. yeah. I feel like, because they were like, pregnancy in your book should be in a trigger warning. Really? Threats is saying this? Right. You're right. Somebody was saying, uh-huh. oh yeah, pregnancy can be really traumatic and and this, that. I mean, and, and I agree with it that. Can, I, yes, yes, it, it, it can. But a trigger warning though for like right. posting. Mm. Yeah. You know, and so, oh, I, and wow. because the author's kind of justification was that, this is a big like surprise. This is a fiction book. Uh oh, yeah. the meeting is going to end in ten minutes. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just get I, it back on. We, we, <laughs> we'll just get it back. That's okay. Yeah. Um. But anyway, this is a fiction book, so pregnancy is usually a pretty big plot point 
in yeah. any fiction story. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it, it usually is like the beginning, like the middle or the end of a story. It's usually mm -hmm. a big deal. And so I'm guessing I hadn't read her book, but I'm guessing it was one of those things in her book. And she's like, look, if I put a trigger warning on there. It, you know, it's going to screw the whole book. Yeah, it's going to get the book away. Like, <laughs> and then, back. so it's one of those things, right? And there's a lot of stuff these days where I get the intent of what people have. Basically, long story short, I, I tweeted out um, a couple of weeks ago that people talk about ethical. That word ethical gets thrown around in a lot of different contexts. Oh, so I see you shaking God. your head and I think oh, I know where I'm going. God. Ethical meat, ethical AI, oh, ethical... God sourcing ethical this that yeah. ethical everything people throw that word around and i said <laughs> replace the word ethical with makes me feel good and you will yeah. understand and, you know the ethics like, of our time and it is bro, so true it's so you know, true yeah, because there is yeah. this there's this and yeah. you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm yeah, talking yeah. about yeah yeah i do there is this movement that nobody should ever feel bad about anything and everything should be telegraphed. Everything should be known. Every unknown should be known. We know so much. Uh -huh. Why can't we just know when something's going to be bad, like right around the corner? I, and I think it's just extreme. Yeah. And maybe people listening are like, ah, Keith, this, you, you're exaggerating, blah, blah, blah. Really? Because, I mean, think about it. From the 90s when we were kids to now, like, yeah, yeah. you know, warning labels on food and, uh, you know, safety belts, like all this th I mean, the safety belts was before the food stuff, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's been all these kind of progressions of, okay, well, somebody complained about that. Somebody died or got sick because of that. And then all of a sudden we have all these, these levels of warnings and, you know, basically when do, when do we let people think for themselves? Mm -hmm. When do we let people say, Hey, I'm looking you know, at this like book and this book says it's a military biography, which this is my bi yeah. biography, by the way. So mm -hmm. you kind of do the math, right? Military. What am I thinking? War, guns, conflict. It, that's just military. Even if you don't know anything about me or the book or anything, you can do that math in your head. So when I pick up a fantasy book and it's by a female author and it's about dragons or whatever, and it's like, this is a mature fantasy book. And, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing a book that I don't want to name because I read a part of it and it's a very popular book. And it, I just found it to be horrible. The <laughs> one, some of the worst shit that I've that I've read in many many years. But it's super popular. Mm. I'm, I don't want to give it shine, so I'm not going to name it. But I read it, and it, I was like, when I read the the book blurb on the back, yes, I got a sense of okay, this is a, a female author. It's saying it's. It's dragons with sex in it. It's romanticy. I don't know if you've heard of this this genre, romance <laughs> fantasy. It, it, is, <laughs> no. it is a thing. It is a thing. I, and it sounds like it would be. Yes. It is okay. a thing. So it's a romanticy story. And mm. so I okay, I go in with dragons, sex. I'm thinking Game of Thrones, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's one of those things. And and just knowing that, I I made the decision to open the preview and read the first yes. chapter, read the yes. first couple of chapters. And so my point is with trigger warnings, why can't you assume that your reader can do that math? And, 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 and this is a nuanced argument too, because I also think that it depends on your audience. Mm -hmm. If you know your audience is mostly female, Mm -hmm. and that there's you know it's younger females too it's not like older we're talking like yeah 25 to 35 then okay maybe you should consider putting a trigger warning especially yeah. if you know that you're writing in this genre where it's it's female centric um a lot of people a lot of, i mean i think a lot of women read those read those types of books some men do too but it's mostly women it's women writing for women so then you should put a trigger warning. But I think that this notion that everything should have a fucking trigger warning. Yeah. And and that's not what she was saying. I'm not I'm not yeah, saying yeah, that. But I'm yeah. saying like this this idea that I should know if I might get triggered. Yeah. That is that is too far. That is too much. <laughs> and I think it, it's you need to you need to 
your, your readers need to have a spine that you need to you movie. need to step back and say <laughs> like does life come with trigger warnings no do you no. know when you walk out the door if you're going to get triggered by a bird or by the rain <laughs> or by your boss or by you don't know shit so why it's just this thing man with with the times yeah, and so yeah. that brings up my second point that i that i was thinking as you uh -huh. were and and we're gonna lose it's gonna cut off we got like four minutes but i'm gonna bring it up wait, anyway. wait, wait, okay all right yeah okay okay we can, we yeah. can switch to a new one yeah okay let's just switch to a new one and then we'll we'll break we'll here. do part two. yeah we'll do part two of this we'll do part music okay it's back on um right. okay before we broke for our mandatory Zoom break. <laughs> <laughs> Bootlegging it. All right. Hey, hey. Free Save that money. But, uh, <laughs> I had a question for you, and it's kind of a question slash we can, we can talk about this, but especially since you were talking about feminism and we're on the kind of men and women topic. Um, do you think that it's easier to write books as a man or as a woman is it easier for men or women to write books because here's where the question comes from here and i'll give you the question here, here's where it comes from because what i've seen over the last two or three years of ever, basically ever since i published serious and limited right that i've been paying attention to the reader space and trying to find readers mm -hmm. i've seen that one most authors especially fiction authors tend to write to themselves they write themselves mm -hmm. so if i'm a woman then i'm gonna write something that yeah. deals with women and it's gonna primarily be for women not always but mm -hmm. that's what you're thinking and same with most guys that write they put themselves in the story or a version of themselves or something like that so naturally what they write tends to be primarily for men mm. that's just that's the easiest way to start writing is to take your experience and put it on the screen, put it on the page, make a character that resembles you. And that's what I've seen. And that leads to an interesting problem because also what I've seen, and this is by years of paying attention, being on social media, promoting my own books, all the stuff that most casual readers are women most yeah it, it's just facts just by numbers it's just it's what i've seen it's yeah it's what it is you know and so men so... don't tend we don't tend to read casually as much and so that's a problem when you're a fiction writer and you're a man because yeah. you're like well shit who's gonna read these dudes aren't reading. Uh, hopefully so, Netflix. Netflix will pick it up and then everybody will see it as a movie. Right, right. But yeah. what what do you think? I wanted to get your your opinion. You know, I, I honestly I, I honestly think that it's equally easy for anybody to write. Yeah. And this is that is that that is not politically correct. Like I truly okay. think it's equally easy. I think the thing is though, all right, so so in this new version of Laurentia, I change how I talk about men and women. And I say this in the first chapter, like this, this is the the meat of why I wrote Laurentia second edition, because right. essentially I wasn't happy with what I said and how I said it. And also I got smarter in the statistics. So I said, I need to write a better version of this book. Mm. So that's what it was. And, and part of it was, I wasn't happy with it because there's a more empirical way to make those observations. Now, back then there wasn't. Right. I think of men as uh, now asserter energy mm -hmm. and women as domainic energy, a domain. When you're in a space, the space defines you. And and I think a great image for that is that, you know, the typical space portal, your, your ship is going to pass through this ring and mm -hmm. then, you know, end up right. in the other side of time or whatever. The portal itself is throwing arrows at the ship to tell it where it's going to be and how to go, mm -hmm. right? But the portal is a place. It's a situation. That's mm -hmm. domainic energy. Mm -hmm. The ship itself is just the trajectory it's trying to pass through. So masculine energy to me is the arrow that goes mm -hmm. in its direction. Mm -hmm. Feminine energy is the space of arrows that converge mm -hmm. on whatever's going in there. That's that's you know it's extra abstract. 
it helps oh, yeah. a lot in interpreting those asteroids though because yeah, the asteroids right. are fundamentally abstract they're actually not about human men and human women or right, yeah. giraffes or you know books they're not about anything specific they're about energies right and yeah. so so writing books ultimately you're putting an idea somewhere like you're asserting an idea onto the page right and whether right. you do it as the portal saying here's what i've taken in mm. and you know arrowing down on the page or you do it as the ship which says i want to write this i want to write that i think that's equal because everybody mm. has that and they just right. we just have it we we have it in different realms right. i guess different dimensions as far as casual reading though you know ultimately domains get their defining power from stuff in the domain mm -hmm. stuff that the domain takes in right. and and we've had millennia of of equating taking inputs to a definitional space as taking any kind of asserted input and mm -hmm. so the problem with you know uh you know millennia of women's oppression mm. is is that by virtue of being the it is going to sound very freudian but by virtue of being the sperm that you just i'm going to launch my rocket mm -hmm. or whatever yeah. um there's a tendency to be first yeah. to disrupt right. to um assert but there's also on the back half of that once all that's done and people know what you've you've you know colonialized or exercised your imperialism on or you've defined freudian style or you've enslaved once people have once you've done your pioneering and your your conquering and your erasing of people or whatever it is folks settle where you were mm -hmm. and now it becomes a domain right. and it rewrites everything including how appropriate your methods were <laughs> and so yeah. you know the male energy was going to go in there first and then get blamed and bastardized later right. yeah, um because it it, it deforested it deforested everything it, it robbed cultures and all that right. um so so I, I guess to bring it back to the conversation about books and casual reading i th ultimately think that that you know there's some things where we're still kind of trained to uh, that are easier to assert into, mm, right? Yeah. Boxing, yeah. you know, which yeah. can be done yeah, by correct, both, so. mm -hmm. of course. But but the energy of it is very. I'm gonna do this. Oh to yeah, you, absolutely. And I'm yeah, gonna point this on you. The yeah, energy of it about, is, yeah. you know, it's like we're a masculine about, type. Yeah, we're talking about the energy and stuff. Not men and exactly. women can do what they want. Exactly. But exactly. it's just. Yeah, where, where you, you know your success and i like what you're i think i get what you're saying yeah this is one of those domains where it is a domain where yeah. books tend to I, I think of typical book clubs or yeah just places where people pass around books it's a very feminine energy there's a of, there's because there's yeah. a taking in there's a there's right. a listening frankly and i mean right. the space you know it's going to receive things right and uh and again that's not weakness it's not passivity it's not no. lower it's not anything it's just that we need the inputs and then we're going to get our definition from that it's the quintessential definition of the mother right, right. Yes. i'm going to define the shit out of this baby until this baby is a real thing man you can't do that right right so um yeah man i i think as far as writing Everybody has the arrow, right? Right. Anybody um, can pick it up. Yeah. But Any, I think anybody it's... can pick it up. Anybody can put it down on paper. Yeah. But but when it comes to being receptive to some other energy or some other person's stuff, uh, you know, the the male energy, the arrow get, that gets fired from the bow isn't very receptive to much. The bullet is not receptive to much. You know what I'm saying? It, it causes a whole lot of you know consequences when it's yeah. fired but it's it's not really trying to I, share I like and share that. like what it thought about that book that's a good that's a good i think that's a very good analogy and i actually have a real world demonstration of this mm -hmm. so i have a tiktok and on tiktok <laughs> maybe you know where this is going <laughs> and on tiktok um all i post about is books when i post i don't post often on there because i don't read because I'm, I'd rather be writing books 
than reading them. So it's a tough balance because I really like reading, yes. but then it's like, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be writing my next book than reading yeah. something. Yeah. It, it, that, yo, dude, that is so male. It is. I don't yeah. read. <laughs> I don't read. I know. Like, yeah. I don't you read. don't read. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even read my own reviews, but I especially don't read other people's books. I'm like, no, I got yeah. my own. I'm, right. I got, I'm, this, this bullet knows where it's going. But then okay. I also, no part of me likes to be, and that's why I mentioned that other book that I'm not going to name the title, yeah. but I do check out things because I do want to, you know, one, I actually want to improve my craft of writing. Like, and that's how mm -hmm. you get better is you read other people's stuff. Hopefully their stuff is good, but even you can learn from bad stuff too, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean, I definitely get a good confidence boost. So look, I read this one goose book, man. This is a brother's book too, man. I, dude had 124 chapters. Wow. He wrote War and Peace. <laughs> it was, and, and it was literally like this guy who is like a former Marine. And, yeah. and, and I've noticed a lot. Of, I've read some other military fiction that, and I'm glad I've defined my own like yeah. military game tech fiction because i, I don't yeah. I, I don't want to be lumped in with standard military fiction because yeah it's the standard you know it's this guy he's a marine yeah. he's a sergeant he got his uniform out he looked in in the mirror he knew his buddy called him da, da, da. you know it's just it's very oh okay it's it, it reads like a slice of life but it's just mm -hmm. not written very well mm. and I tried to give the brother some feedback too, but he he didn't want it. He didn't want it. I, I, I reached out to him and I was like, yeah. hey, that's fine. But yeah. uh, anyway, so <laughs> TikTok. I'm on TikTok and I post about these books. Uh -huh. And <laughs> most of the time when I post, almost all the responses are from women. Mm -hmm. Because I don't, have you heard of Book Talk? No. Okay. Book Talk is this, this, community of of readers that basically it's like a giant worldwide book club if you hashtag Ooh. book talk on tiktok Ooh. then Ooh, that people, sounds... people are sounds like a lot <laughs> well yeah yeah it's it is a lot yeah. people are reviewing books they're sharing books they're sharing their opinions on books you know it's it is like a giant book club i think that's a good way to describe it and it's actually gained like cultural momentum like you will go in some stores in certain cities in the u.s at least and you'll see as seen on book talk and they'll have like mm. these books that have been passed around that are popular yeah. on there and things like that. It's got its own culture. And so mm. I, of course, will hashtag that one because I'm talking about books. That's all I talk about is just like most of the time I just summarize like, hey, I read this. Mm -hmm. This is what it is because the videos are sure short. It's like 60 seconds. Mm. Mm -hmm. So and almost all the responses were from women, like almost mm -hmm. all my followers mm. like and you can. That's the good thing about TikTok. If you're trying to run a business or get exposure, you can get it fast on there. Mm -hmm. Super fast. Like one video that takes like 10 minutes to make, I can get like 1,700 impressions. I can get hundreds mm -hmm. of people that have seen it in mm -hmm. in an hour. Mm -hmm. Since to get that type of reach anywhere else is impossible. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I noticed this trend and I was like, okay, y'all. I made a video one time. I said, dudes, fellas, uh -huh. where you at? Uh -huh. Book talk can't be all women. Like, uh -huh. I know you're there. Uh -huh. All that. Uh -huh. And a couple of these dudes did emerge from the woodwork. Uh, they okay. did say, I'm okay. here. I just don't post and I'm reading this. Uh -huh. And I said, tell me what you're reading. Uh -huh. And let me know where you're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't have a large audience, but I did this and mm -hmm. a bunch of dudes came out. So the point is they were there, but like noticeably fewer, oh, noticeably yeah. fewer yeah. that are actively reading fiction or reading and yeah. I focus on fiction because that's like the main thing book talk is about. Mm -hmm. So the point is that I think if I wrote, and because that's one of the reasons why I don't write, and you know, you read Serious and Limnick, so you know kind of how I write. Like my writing, I don't project mm -hmm. myself onto the page because mm -hmm. unlike, I think I'm atypical as a as a writer in that way mm -hmm. because my, I have the opposite viewpoint. Like I mm -hmm. write to explore other 
people's yeah. Yeah. point of views and cultures and ways of thinking. Like that's my way of of learning about experiences that I will never have. Like mm -hmm. I, I'll, I'll never know what it's like to be a woman, <laughs> but yeah. I've written women and that's the closest thing. Yeah. And so that that's just me, but I know I'm atypical because it's not easy to put yourself mm -hmm. in somebody else's shoes. It requires a yeah. lot of empathy. It requires a lot of patience with yourself to say, I don't have this experience, but I, I want to, to faithfully represent this on the page. And so that, that leads to a problem, right? <laughs> because if I think of myself, I thought of it yesterday. If I yeah. were to write myself yeah, and just like, okay, my audience is just going to be black men. Uh huh. <laughs> Ain't no brothers yeah, that's read. That's your problem. I was going to say, that was your problem. <laughs> oh, black men read? What? What? I mean, I know. I mean, obviously oh, we're sitting here. We we read. Well, you read. No, no, you read. I read, right? <laughs> you, I don't right. read. But, read. I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, who, I raise your hand you if you read that. a book in the last I, week. I, I don't, I don't believe you said that. My audience was just gonna be black men. I was like, no, nah, man, <laughs> no, nah, man. Raise your hand if you read a book in the last week. You see, my hand is still down. <laughs> But it's true. You see the problem, right? Like, Yo, black, and black that's what I think read, about. Bro. Like, I see mostly, I see these people complaining, and it is mostly women on there, but there's yeah. men that complain too. There's men that complain on there too, on threads. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, y'all got man. it black easier than I do. And, and, I, and, like, I, and I feel like, I feel like maybe there's a little bit of pride in, in being a black male and not not getting educated yeah you know, so i know, so, I know. yeah Sh that's... shannon and i were at the convenience store across the street and there's this old man we try to be respectful and stuff and i don't want to call him old i'm getting a little gray here too mm -hmm. but this old man he was just leering he was just staring he was all up in people's personal space he was within two feet of me i'm like brother he, he, this yeah, is just yeah. basic yeah, politeness. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, I turn yeah, around yeah. and He's Shannon's a... trying to do her thing and, and we go together because I don't want anything to happen to her. And you know, like like I turn around, this man is like breathing down my neck. I was like, bro. Oh. And and it was weird because I had to put on my I had to put on my, my black demeanor and be like, Yeah, yeah. Hey, yo, what's up? Yeah, what's yeah. Up? How's, what's going how's it going? On? Yeah. yeah. It, it did. The man was like, What? Just he was just cross eyed. It's just like a cross -eyed. a black guy, black guy. Yeah, it's like a cross eyed old sixty year old man. And I'm like, you you need to learn some basic manners, man. I know you my elder or whatever, but I mean you don't be getting yeah. in people's personal space. And you know he was like he was trying to he I could I could almost read his mind. He, he the interracial thing was weird. He was oh, like, oh okay who's, yeah. Who's he's, this he's, white? He's, who's this white old, girl and this yeah, black old, man? Yeah. And he's coming up with all his things. And mm -hmm. I'm like. Brother, move out of the way. You rude, though. I mean, you could right. do that from over there. So I don't know. I don't know why I got on that. But but the, the idea of reading, yeah, it wasn't on his mind. <laughs> I'm just yeah, telling man. you. Yeah, I'm just telling I, you. I thought about that, man. I and and like... we've said this before. We've we've right. said this before. I'm I'm proud to be a man. I'm proud to be black. It doesn't take anything. I, you know, I got friends who are proud to be white. Actually, have a couple of friends that I was talking to years ago when we had these kinds of conversation and they felt comfortable enough to say that you know we're in an age of white shaming uh if you're on the other side of that sure. and you know so yeah. but if you have you have one part's privilege and one part disadvantage male black mm. woman white you know then you you should in theory be able to stand in either one right. and not right. be a jerk right so right. I, sometimes i i you know i know i have male privilege and i I mean, I mean, look, don't shame me for it. I can't change that. But I'm trying not to be a jerk, you know, or anything. I'm trying to be trying to be sensitive and stuff. But yeah. anyway, all all I'm saying is that all I'm saying is that is that, you know, proud to be a male, proud to be black. Ain't trying to be this dude though. <laughs> and yeah. and and what this dude was was indicative of I, I told you, I know I told you in the previous uh, two brothers talking about all those. I'm not going to use the N word because I feel like now we're stuck on YouTube and we we can't necessarily yeah, get away with it. YouTube's boss yeah. will find the N word. Right, so, yeah. but they were on the post though. 
they really yeah. were. Yeah. And I was laughing and I was explaining to Shannon, I was like, Lupe Fiasco deliver. Because we 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 passed those houses. They really were on those poaches. Yeah. They really were five of them. We yeah. drove two more houses. They really were four more. Yeah. <laughs> they were just on the poach, bro. They weren't reading no. books though. No, no. They were just not a book hanging. In, not a book inside. Just hanging. That's all. And there's a you know, and in, in, in black culture, you know, I, we grew up with we grew up with this too of you know yeah, we have people on the poach across from our well, we yeah. grew up with, I was talking about from like the, the book oh. reading side, you know, ah, like yes, are, yes, yes, if yes. you do read books and you do like, you know, getting in book learnings. Yeah. And book learnings. Right. You, you know, you, you looked at. Hey, you think you're smart now, huh? You right. think you're smart now? Oh, college. You know, right. Right. You own college big time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, man. No, you, you ain't lying, man. And no. we have this within oh. this, the stigma within the black community. To be educated is is an exception. It's, it's joke worthy. It, it's, it's joke, joke worthy, worthy yeah. too. Yeah, and, and I mean they're not making sad. fun of you, but I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah, man, it's uh, yeah. it's kind of sad that you. The best you can come up with is like them jokes. Right, right. All you can wow. do is joke about it, and you can't even oh, you can't even mm -hmm. fathom what it would be like mm -hmm. to, yeah, you know, read something. You know, or really, yeah, and and obviously, you know? obviously, obviously, it's not you know. It's not all black people. I mean, it's, it's not, the, of course. And but even if it were, even if it were most black people, look, I'm not, I'm not in your shoes. I don't know. I'm just saying, right. you don't need to joke about me, though. But it's in. But we know. But we feel it. As I, I might be buying your block. I might be buying your block tomorrow. I buy you. I buy you right. tomorrow. I, I kick you out. It may <laughs> not be. And, I mean, and I, you don't know, really want to joke. I it's agree. not most black people, but it's it's a it is a it's the culture. It's the culture. It's black the future culture, of the culture. That yeah, we man. all know, even if you know it unconsciously, that yeah, education to be you don't, labeled as smart is is considered a negative in certain go, in certain spheres. You don't go to your black peer and start right. talking about college and stuff like right. that. You may go to the parents of your peers and maybe you're a parent yourself. You say, Oh yeah, I'm so proud. My son is in college. Right. But you don't go to your you don't go to your regular person yeah know? man it's one of those things so I, I i brought this up because that's what yeah. i was thinking i was like man if i really wrote that way which i'm glad i don't which yeah it's one of those things like and and yeah. i'm not shitting on that if your thing is to write about black issues and the struggle and slavery mm -hmm. then you should totally write that because it, you're gonna write best if you write what's true and i was reading yeah, something yeah, the other yeah. day it's like to write well is to write true to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Where you get bad writing is when people are trying to manipulate their writing to fit a certain style or fit a certain trend that doesn't really fit. And you can just kind of tell that this, because there's not a continuous, and you can see this in fiction and nonfiction. Yeah. 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 You can tell there's not a continuous, thread there's just some disconnects between yeah. this idea and that idea this character and that character it just doesn't fit but if the person even if their level of writing was low if it was just continuous then it would be infinitely better than this mishmash of ideas well i didn't want to offend somebody here so i yeah. tweaked that well i didn't yeah. I wasn't really sure about what I was saying here. So I changed that. And I thought I wanted to sound like one of my favorite authors or whatever. So I changed that to be more like them when you should have just written like you write. Yeah. And, and yeah. some of the best writing in history is just written like people thought and wrote. And that's why it's considered famous. And that's why, because yeah. there was a, there was a message, there was an intent, there was a soul to what yeah. it, that person really projected themselves onto the page. The words didn't matter. Yeah. I'm really hoping that uh, people people like how I wrote Laurentia too, because even though it's a dictionary, they never read a dictionary like this. I mean, it, it really was written by a black guy. You could tell I'd be That's using all up. kinds of words. Yeah. I said, you know, I, I, I got an AI picture in there. Some, 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 he looked like he came out of Mad Max. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was it was that he looked he could have been he could have been Kano from Mortal Kombat and but it was the asteroid that was destroyed the text mine I was like right. I said watch out for this guy he wants what he wants 
Yeah. And he don't really give a shit what you think <laughs> about it. And oh, I man. like being able to write colloquially, you know, just because I'm my, my writing is a conversation. There and you there you go. You know, it and both That's of true. us, you know, we we have n- not in fiction, but but in terms of like this like some of the stuff you write, uh it's it, like detached to third person, but a lot of it, both of us, we kind of put put ourselves in there right. and it's a conversation right so right. for me uh you know part of me feels bad that there's so much autobiographical stuff in all my books mm. um but i only feel a little bad because in order to write to write the book it's a conversation i'm talking go. to you right mm. and and i i have this little faint apology a little bit in the book. Right, right. I say, look, I'm not putting in this autobiographical stuff out of ego or anything like that. It's just that I don't know how to tell you efficiently in this dictionary. It right, would take right. five pages to explain. It's not worth it. But but the bottom line is I'm having a conversation with you here. Right. I'm right. not I am not Oxford and I'm not some authoritative person. Hopefully somebody will do the research and their definitions will replace mine when they use a bigger uh, lexicon of words and, right. you know, things like that. And all the text model will be different. I hope you come in after me and tighten this up. So I'm not trying to write this as if, you know, I'm, I'm the Cambridge, uh, you know, Botanica authority on it. I just tell you what I got. It, it's right. not worth right. it for me to try to sound polished or anything like that. I'm going to tell you what I read. Mm-hmm. And I'm also going to tell you kind of how you might feel about this asteroid. Right. Otherwise right. dry and it sucks. Um, but yeah, man, I, writing, writing is so interesting. And I, I realized that, you know, I actually do subconsciously and now consciously these days demand that all my friends be able to write, mm-hmm. like you got to write. Yeah, no, I'm serious, bro. Like, I, like I, I went and I was like, I was going down the, the, it's not a list, but I was thinking about my friends and like you and, and Emily and, and stuff like that. Uh, even Priya, like, like, like Priya. Oh, 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 viral, you know, the TikTok for you. Uh, she writes some stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, like, I'm like, man, everybody, everybody in my circle, Shanna, Shanna writes. Mm-hmm. And if you don't write, it's, it's, it's truly like, I don't know you. <laughs> I yeah. like, I think this, the, and nobody, nobody set out to, to set this up as a, as a gate or anything, but right. it's, there's something about, there's something about your expression being meaningful and capturable. Right. And I feel like if you, if you can't write, then maybe you have some other way of making sure your voice right. sticks. Right. Right. I don't know. But if you can't do any of that, you can't write, you can't rap, you can't sing, you can't document mm-hmm. what you thought. Right. Yeah. Then how do we, how do we know you were there? That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Do it. Maybe we know through your deeds. Maybe you were mute and you ran a badass business or you painted some art. That's cool. That works. Mm-hmm. But but I this is I, I like that we kind of get back to the theme of you know why we do this creativity right. Mm-hmm. There's something about leaving something right. to to have been there. You know what I'm saying? And I think writing you get to play with the tools of right. having been there. But but even if you don't write or can't write or whatever, I mean. You shouldn't be one of those folks. And I'm thinking about one person in particular. Obviously, I'm not going to name who they were, mm-hmm. um, but but just they stereotypical, jokey black, but they weren't black. <laughs> and but, you know, it was it was a freaking joke to yeah. be smart or yeah. or what whatever. Mean? And, yeah. you know, and that person was able to kind of make some kind of mark. But at the end of the day, I think the mark that they made, uh, the impression they made on me, was that they're really just an extension of the furniture. And, ex- you know, of, of no, I'm, 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 I'm not, I, look, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm loading what I know about this person. And obviously yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. going to tell you anything about them, but because, yeah, yeah. you, you know, you don't want to air, you know, craziness no, about you. folks, slander people. But, but I mean, just, their their work and stuff like that yeah if i were to kind of deal with them i swear they would just be a an npc Mm. drawn from the work 
and yeah. they, you know, yeah. after some irritation with with how they they did things, you you'd either forget about them or just be, you know, right. But but they were neither here nor there as as folks of substance, right. So, and anyway. and I say and I and I like that because even if you don't write, even if the thought of writing and because I, I get this, there's a lot of people who through school writing just became this kind of this yeah. chore this oh yeah yeah maybe writing's know, not just, your thing yeah, yeah. yeah maybe you just can't stand it oh we've got 10 minutes left all right that's okay um <laughs> even if you can't stand it there's so many ways now to capture your ideas because that's the whole point yeah. it's not it's not the manipulation of words yeah in sentences it's less about that because i think that's a lot of people get caught up on the mechanics of writing mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh, it doesn't sound like this or, you know, I, I, it's all run ons or whatever. I don't know where to put my commas and this, this, yeah. this how you get it gets beat into you at school. Right. Mm. But you forget that writing, it's really just recording ideas. That's it. Yeah. And all a book is, is a series of ideas. Most of the time mm. they're connected, even though they don't have to be. Yeah. And you don't even have to write books. It's just about getting your thinking out there. And mm. it doesn't even have to be out there. Sometimes yeah. it's it could just be in a journal. It could be on a on an, in an app or whatever. Just something just for you. And I've actually yeah. been doing this. I've been through all my other writing. I'm proud to say that throughout 2024, I have been keeping up with my personal stories. I just keep a, a word doc, and every Very day cool. I write down yeah. the most the first thing basically that pops into my head from the previous yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's an event. Sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes it's just like, hey, I just worked on this. Mm -hmm. But just doing that exercise again has, I don't know, it's it's bought back the fun. Because, you know, a lot of the writing I do nowadays, you know, I'm working on my next book. I'm writing on Mm -hmm. on social media. It's it's basically business writing. Yeah. It's it's for a purpose. This is just for me. So it's a different lens that I can get on. And I think that's the best place to start. That's where I started was just mm-hmm. writing my journal for a decade plus yeah. and just doing that, not even every day. And that got me so used to, to sharing my ideas with myself that yeah. eventually I was like, okay, I feel like I'm ready to share with other people, even in its most raw form. And mm-hmm. I look back on Sirius and Limnick and I'm so proud of it because it was a pretty complicated yeah yeah well, for a first time it novel was. it's yeah. a complex it's a, it's a great it's a great book bro it's it oh is. and and i have this to show you i hadn't shown you this but, uh-huh. and here is the first half uh-huh. of the japanese translation oh of serious and okay oh that's awesome this is what i've been working on in the past and yeah. check this out that is some actual Japanese on that page. Traditional Japanese style. Yeah. And I'm so wow. proud of the the front where... Check this out. Uh... <laughs> That's awesome. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, neat. <laughs> yep. Very so... cool. The the point is that this was a complicated book. And so uh, I realized, even though it's not perfect, and uh, people, and I and I hate I, I'm trying not to say that anymore because there really is no perfection. Yeah, I mean, people yeah. throw it around, but there's not. It's it's what it needed to be and the best yeah. it could be for what yeah. for what I could do and what I knew at the time. Yeah. And actually, right now, since we're about to end, I'm gonna start plugging stuff since this, we can end it here. This is what I like mm-hmm. about not paying for Zoom. It's like, it's a firm <laughs> end. You just have to stop. You got to get forced off. Um, <laughs> right now, I'm working on something that I've been wanting to write for a while, which is a short story that takes mm-hmm. place after the events of Sirius and Lemnick. So this takes place shortly after, and mm-hmm. it stars Jean Hua and Noe, and they're on this little adventure that will bridge to Sirius and Lemnick 2. Ah. Cool. And I've also gone back. I, I haven't shown you this either. Well, I sent you the picture, but I haven't shown this to you. This is the the proof of mm-hmm. the the new cover. Yeah, yeah. Of Sirius and Limnick. But I'm getting ready to republish this yeah. as Second Evolution. 
and second evolution is gonna contain connections to all the side stories that i've written so i oh, rewrote okay. as i was going through and this was the crazy part about this translation i was translating uh -huh. and i was proofreading using the ai and mm. i was updating it to add connections to serious Olympic escape from okinawa oh, i got you got other you. side stories so now there's call yeah. outs in the original book to okay. these new properties and then this new side yeah. story that's gonna yeah that's be that's, that's always weird going back in time and doing that i did i did it once with principles of time travel it is time. it's interesting yeah. but it was also very fun yeah. too because it was just yeah. like it was a standalone novel it was meant uh -huh. to be standalone it was never meant yeah. to be a sequel and now it's like okay yeah. i'm pulling a jk rowling and i'm just gonna <laughs> shit, six more books let's let's go <laughs> whatever yeah, yeah and so right now i'm writing it's called sink hole Okay. Think hole is the name of like to sink your computer and then hole uh -huh. like the whole thing. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the name of it. Oh, okay. It's called Sink Hole, and it's that's the name of the the short story. And interesting. I am really I'm about maybe sixty percent done. I've been working on it okay. the last few days, and I'm uh -huh. super excited about this because this is the first one. It's the first thing I've written with AI. Like mm, even mm -hmm. the last new thing that I wrote was the short story Legend of Cheeks in December. Yeah. But I wrote that manually and I was just like a fever pitch three or four days. Just get it out. But yeah. this is the first time I'm using in conjunction with AI. So that's been an interesting thing. And then it's yeah. also the first time that I'm really taking some of the lessons that I've learned about writing mm -hmm. and I'm applying it to this narrative about how to yeah make it more emotional more connect better with the people that are meant to to yeah. read this if you liked Sirius and Limnick all the 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 stuff the staples are there the video game stuff the yeah the yeah. intrigue the commentary mm -hmm. about technology all that stuff is there but i'm really trying to focus on I want you to care about this character. And and I feel like they mm -hmm. cared about the characters. That's one of the things that I really did well in Serious Olympic was I really yeah. made memorable characters, yeah. which I didn't realize is a hard thing to do, but it is because I've read other people's first novels and yeah. characters, you know, they're just kind of there. They get pushed. It's a plot pushing thing. And that's mm -hmm. a rookie novel fiction mistake that, well, I shouldn't say it's a mistake. That That's a step that you need mm -hmm. to take. Just finish. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm really trying to, and I made it first person from Jean Hua's perspective because I really mm. wanted people to get into to her psychology and what's going on with her, what she's thinking, her mm. change from the first book to this side story, which is going to lead to, I already have, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I already have plans uh -huh. for her okay. character in the rest of the series. And I'm, okay. I'm really excited to, to get towards Very it. Cool. But anyway, we're running out of time, but... Bottom line is, I'm glad we talked about writing, man. I'm glad we talked uh -huh. about books today. Because um, this it's just things that this this culture war, you know, like it's. I feel like people are in. in I, I have a friend over here who's like he lives a certain way because he's always like, yeah, the I'm this is my world ending plan. Like the world's uh -huh. ending. So I got to live like. Just like whatever. Oh, okay. And anytime I, I, I run into people <laughs> who, you know, and I'm friends with this guy, but anytime yeah, I yeah. run into people like this, I'm like, the world's ending for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It's yeah. totally a personal decision. And that's what I think yeah. about things like the, the culture war and things like that. Yeah. yeah okay. That's funny war, because I don't. are at war with Yeah, because I, I don't have any contact with such a thing. I mean, I'm I'm in the middle of, you know, Georgia I mean, and stuff like that, and well, I just don't run into it. But but then again, I don't consume media much at all. I so, am the opposite. I do. You know. I do run into it, and but you can choose yeah. whether or not to engage with it. I'm not saying it doesn't affect me because it does. Yeah. Someone could read my book and be like, "Oh, there was no, there was no trigger warning. What the fuck? Like I was totally triggered." Yeah. And like somebody, I posted uh -huh. about the book that I'm not gonna name. And I said, yeah, it seems like it's mostly written for the females. And then there was a woman who said, I'm offended. <laughs> it's that, I'm telling you. I'm yeah. like, what are you offended by? And she was offended because she was a woman and she was said, I don't like it either. And I'm like, 
that doesn't change the fact that it's mostly <laughs> written for females. It's like it's a romantic dragon sex story. Like, yeah, most guys ain't gonna be into that. And it's written by a woman. Like, you can't even say shit like that. You can't even call a spade a spade, and is somebody gonna be offended, right? Anyway, this has been two brothers talking, y'all. <laughs> Write what you want to write, practice your writing, get better, and love each other, man. Like, yeah, whether you're man or woman, you need the woman standing next to you or that woman that's your boss or whatever. That If you're a woman, you need that man. Okay, so I got cut off during my, my little <laughs> love everybody speech by uh -huh. our mandatory Zoom cut off. But hey, no, it's true. That's all I wanted to say was that that's that's truly how I think of things. I mean, I think it's sad that these days it does become you can't talk about men without people assuming that you're dissing women. And same thing. There's a group yep. of people yep. that it's like you can't talk. I was reading somebody's stub stack a couple of last week, actually, and he was talking about he had written all these ways that it sucks to be a man mm -hmm. that people don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, there was, I'll have to, maybe I can find, but, um, that's saying my microphone is not working properly. What's going on? here? You, you, you cut out for a second. You were talking oh, okay. for that last sentence though. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. But I can hear you fine now. It's saying to check, check. No, you're good. Uh, okay. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I was reading this article and yeah this guy writing about ways it sucks to be a man and it's stuff that you don't hear about as much mm -hmm. and some of the things the standouts were how a lot of the violence in games and movies is against men how the in a lot of stories that are popular men don't really have any arcs it's just they just kind of exist a lot of their development as mm -hmm. emotional beings mm -hmm. it's more about getting men from point a to point b typically you know mm -hmm. go beat the bad guy go do this and get the goal but as far as emotional development we don't see that grooming standards yeah. how to talk to women like really talk to women not just get them in bed yeah you don't really have that and i think of how we came up and i mean i'll just speak for myself like there's not really that and it's funny because i yeah. remember learning a lot of the things about manhood and and from like how to be as a man the early stuff i learned was from watching like fresh P fresh prince mm -hmm. um that was something that i related to back then yeah. um seinfeld's <laughs> was another one that's funny <laughs> these examples but it's true like i mean yeah by the time i was that age dad was already gone and i was really thinking about that and there was we don't have those. And you talked about how women tend female, I didn't say women, feminine energy has that domain specific women S get surround that. the, surround the shit out of you, bro. Right. Like, right. It surrounds when you, you. When you, when you, when you unpopular, the whole space closes in. Right. And, and, you know, I talk about that in, in black male feminism, which you know, I, wrote right, under, yeah. I wrote under a pseudonym. And, you know, my thing is, it's not that I'm hiding from, you know, social media or, or the internet or anything like that, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying some of the things I say in my books because, you know, and there's no expectation of sane dialogue or anything. You don't just go out there and say, say you're a feminist and not expect some craziness. Mm -hmm. you, and, but you also, on the other hand, don't say, look, I know that abuse is, is a thing that you, it's very easy to to trigger people, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. And and so there's almost no good way to introduce a conversation about what makes a perpetrator, because mm. people instantly say "fuck the perpetrator," right? Yeah, and yeah. and that's it. True. I'm like, yeah, but the perpetrator is going to be your son one day, or <laughs> could do something, you know, to your right, daughter, right. and you just want to know how it works so that you can stop it, so you can prevent it. Mm -hmm. And there, there are healthy ways, but you have to have a dialogue. Exactly. And we, yeah. we, we, we sure are missing. surrounded by folks where, yeah. you know, you're, you're taught to not listen. You are. Or 
you know, yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, I get that there's some people who are, quote, you know, bad with names or whatever, but things like a short attention span and terrible with names and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 cop often outs. used as an excuse. To, yeah, it's a cop yeah. out. It's, it's often, a, often, yeah. often, not often, all not all the time. But yeah, but, but it's it's often used as an excuse for hmm. someone who just doesn't want to give the attention to. Right. A, a meaningful wanna, thing. They don't want your to name. Think about oh, it. it's your name. I'm best so bad with names. I'm like, man, look, I was a teacher. I can't just be bad with names right. to my students. Yeah. It fucks up the class. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, I got to get it together. I mean, at least try. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily need to hear your excuse, but that goes for big conversations as well. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, man, I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just like some things like what makes a perpetrator it need to be said. And yeah. they're systemic problems. They're family problems. There's, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's domainic problems, and that's not women. That's spaces that right. a person is in. There's cultures. There's, you know, can't yeah. get out the ghetto. The ghetto's all we know. That kind of thing. Right. You know, yeah. those are true domainic problems. And man, it's it is hard. It's hard. Yeah. People who can both talk about it and are are savvy enough to do something about it within the right. confines of the system that is problematic exactly yeah it's very difficult to have the conversations and that, that was another thing that he that that article was mentioning how among women and typically it's easier to have conversations about harder things like they will talk about just harder stuff they will talk about menstruation they will talk about sex they will talk about these more intimate the thing things like among women men men want to talk about it right we do there's this shaming and right. you know you, and then you and then he talked about this too men yeah, you, are been encouraged to open yo, up share your feelings you, but yeah i, I love the then, way you put this i love the way but, you put this you'll be told but not here not now but not, not here much. not now and women have it worse therefore right. let me shut down your stuff right and talk you about know. millennia Millennia of Never oppression. Like, about the millennia yeah, of I know the struggle. it was there. I, yeah, I know. Right. I know about that. I'm just yeah, saying. I got you. I'm I'm going through PTSD or depression or or what uh, right. abuse or whatever right now. Yeah. I was just trying to get help, and right. now you've turned it into now, me too. And it wasn't yeah. even in here. Exactly. I mean, like I need help now. I was. This was like a cry for help. Exactly. System. And that's and, and it's, yeah. It's politicized and it evaporates. It's and, 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 and all of a like, sudden, okay, well then, what's the fucking point? Yeah. Just what can't a lot of dudes it. say. I can't even. I can't and, and it is true. There is a certain extent to where people don't want to hear you as a man. Mm -hmm. If you're not, if you have a certain tone in your voice, whether that's anger or that's you a little bit on the whiny side right now, you mm -hmm. a little bit. Oh, yeah. Need to bring the bass up in your voice. And, and yeah. people. And women pick up on that. Other men pick up on that. And then you get to this point where it's like, oh, well, shit, I had a problem, but I'll be damned if I bring it up to anybody yeah. because yeah. I'm going to get slammed if I go either yeah. way. If I go too low, if I go too high, if I go too hard mm -hmm. and this middle ground is where I'm struggling. But yeah. it's just it's really hard to to it get is. to those nuanced conversations and. You're fortunate. I know I'm fortunate to have somebody where it's easier. It's not always yeah, easy to do it, but it's easier for me to do it with you my know, situation. It, and some men don't have it at yeah. all. And that's yeah, and that's oh, and that, that is so that all. is so true. I'm I'm yeah. I'm fortunate because in terms of like, you know, manhood lessons and, and learning where it is. And I don't think about it very much, but I, I learned for the most part from pioneers in general. Mm -hmm. And it's it is so cool to have the pioneer be your role model because yeah. I mean it's a little bit negative because because there's a there's a sense of going it alone from yeah. the very beginning. Yeah. Like the very beginning. You're out in the West and you know Yukon Jack. <laughs> I, I got I got introduced to Yukon Jack through the drink, which is one of my favorite drinks. Uh, but but yo, Jack McQuestern, bro, this dude trekking across canada and like mapping it and starting up businesses and stuff but just straight up straight up pioneer you know it's not like he had no friends or anything but but when you do that you get a sense of what it is to kind of you know okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do this right and i may not have all the support but right 
I mean, they may give me bad reviews, but uh, but I'm going to do it exactly. though. Exactly. The 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 one thing that that was important for me with that is that you can't turn around and start fighting the naysayers. Mm, right. uh, that'll get you down. Right. That'll yeah. get you down. I, I mean, maybe other them. people can do it, but but I was lucky to be weird, lucky to be black, and lucky to be trained by pioneers because it was very clear where I couldn't couldn't go. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, or where yeah. I couldn't couldn't get help. Or just like you said, when I needed help. Now that one took me a little long. It take forty years to learn that when you need help, not a lot of places to go, man. There's not, not a lot of places There's to go. There's not. Many and I mentioned this. I'm Kool Aid of of the man needs to fit right there. Like I right mentioned there. that in here. And yes, you, know, you do. You read the book, yeah. And I mentioned yeah. it unapolog unapologetically and openly yeah. that there's no help for you. No. If no. you're on the wrong side of things, mm -hmm. you're on your own. Yeah. as a man <laughs> that's it you, that's, you just are and that's yeah. the way the society's set up that's the way we train our boys to yeah uh, i've seen it in you know i think i think one of the I, I don't want to say the i don't want to say the worst thing but but where i shook my head and, and this is this is this is no shade on the spider-man franchise but there was a certain early spider-man movie very early, one of the first, you know, modern or whatever. okay, yeah, back in the day, old. Where, Toby Maguire, uh, yes, Tobey Maguire, that one, yeah. where he went through this angst phase, and to me, it was the beginning of the end of, you know, the man who I think has I know a what you're talking. To be I, a man, this is, is this Spider Man three? I don't know what it is. Everybody I, lampoons I it. I still did not see that I, one. No, I, I, no, my no, memory no, stopped not, at Spider-Man Look, look man, I don't. I I never watched a full Spider-Man. So, oh, okay. But my thing is that even I know what from, you're talking about from, though. From, from seeing snippets, there's a, there's something with the male hero saying, "Oh, but I'm unsure." I'm right, like, okay, right. but and, and you could be unsure. Look, right. uh, you, my tone wasn't meant to mock, but at the right. same time, mean, yeah. he's a hero. But you know, he's a but but he just he just don't have it together mm -hmm. and he, he they all he can do is like lean right. <laughs> he's lean on stuff right. and like i'm like hey get some nuts dude like right. a little like, there's part little of it nuts. and that's part of it and like like I, around that time and it wasn't just spider-man but it's but not, i yeah. i can point to a kind of cultural shift right in what constituted a male hero mm, and what right. the male hero you know you, you got emo and right yeah that's what grunt, i was thinking grunge was about stuff that time, and, yeah you know Early and, and you know, some of that yeah. some of that stuff is real real dope but at the same time the notion of the moody man right going yeah. through the angst it's almost like we never recovered from that because yeah. now there's this expectation that the the drama level in drama in entertainment has to involve all this stuff and right. you can't just be like a regular like I'm confident, man, without being right, without black having rap that. chauvinist stuff. But even then, right, uh, you know, I, I think our modern rappers are a little bit, little bit Tommy McGuire, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not they, saying I mean, grown I'm not up trying to sound culture. like a, I'm not trying to sound mean. like an old head, but 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 you know what I'm saying? We just no. like, yeah, yeah. Really, <laughs> hey, yo, real world. So so this is a total digression. Overclock song. Princess Ruto. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got to listen to this song. I'm going to have to add it to the list. Princess Ruto. Princess Ruto. <laughs> oh my God. But she like live in the water and I'm on the land. I mean, how would that even work? <laughs> oh it's got auto tune. <laughs> But the mood of it is very modern male, <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's so soft. It's yeah. it's funny, bro. It's funny, dog. Anyway, sorry, I, I that was a digression, but it was funny because I I think of the modern male hero and I think of Princess yeah. Ruta. I'm like, you yeah, need a yeah. napkin. Do you need a napkin, brother? Yeah. I mean, no, it's it's true, man. <laughs> a lot of these younger guys yeah. and and I think the the thing that I've seen in the younger you know working in high schools and and things like that with mm -hmm. with younger guys is that they they feel paralyzed by this new yeah. culture oh yeah Ooh, yeah they they feel afraid and and this was another thing that article that i was that uh essay that i was reading mentioned that basically mm -hmm. any of the old school courting methods you know the 
the yeah, flowers, oh, yeah, no, that that's the that's man confusing, bro. No, I wouldn't uh, even. You know, that's the, dangerous. The resisting. That's... Um, rejection and getting back up and just keep coming back until you know all no, those no. romanticized that's tricky uh, things stuff. those have basically been criminalized nowadays you know you could they've been you know stalking they've been mm-hmm. equated with even sexual yeah. harassment yeah. assault even like yeah. if you talk yeah. to the wrong person on the wrong day then uh, yo if you yo. look at somebody for too long it, you you know you could be in in legal you know, trouble both, and both of us have had things. And yeah. You you definitely worse. Right. To where someone you said something and yep. they yeah they took it out of context. Of sudden, they, and all and of a sudden, it became a, your enemy. It became of the, state. the kind of yeah. It became the kind of thing that I'm like, whoa. If this right. goes too far, mm. then you know mm. the law will be on my ass over right. something that it, like really ain't nothing. I don't believe right. that you invoke in these words. And that man, that has made me jaded as a as a black male. I I, I just, you know, I, mean, I recently yeah. I recently oh so one thing and I I it's I I hate saying this is but I mean it's one thing that did recently happen is I just thought of like American American women in general, mm. and I'm like, mm, man, I, I mean I've mm. I've 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 effectively given up on <laughs> American women just like yeah you know just like just in terms of it's not safe. I mean, there's a yeah. there's a whole there's a culture of, of. I mean, you can't it it and it, it, it didn't even have to be like romantic or anything. You just just, just passing yeah. somebody talking to somebody, right, right. Uh, you know, you know, some place, but but there's a there's an attitude of mm. independence and like, but but the independence is taken to a point of entitlement. And then the entitlement yeah, really is yeah. is is taken to this point of all alarms are raised because of right trigger warnings and things like that. Right. Yeah. And man, you can't do nothing. And right. and and I was just thinking about this the other day. I said, man, it's a culture of of like no one telling you how to act. Just like that dude I described earlier. In the I'm like, didn't anybody tell you it's rude to stare? This is like cliche. This is like old right. advice, old man. This is this conversation. You, you're in my space. Yeah. Two feet is too close. And you're two feet from me. You're three feet from my girl. You're staring, and like, you need to have some manners, man. Mm. And I feel like, but you know, with you know, so-called culture wars or whatever, yeah. people yeah. just think they can say whatever the fuck, mm-hmm. and it just don't dawn on them that is rude. It's like you're not making friends by being this way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And. I, I even though I believe we're in the greatest country in the world, people how to act mm-hmm. like just respect for a bigger collective. We just don't yeah. do it. We, no. we we call our we call any president, any governor, anybody out. We drop names. Mm-hmm. We 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 name names. We give thumbs down. We get all our friends to thumbs down it too. Rotten tomatoes and, mm-hmm. and just, just hate it. Right. We don't care. Bro. ethical it makes you feel good yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but they, and, and, and you know that was the one thing i didn't say earlier ethical we got all this ethical stuff but i'll be honest man as somebody who taught ethics in college ain't no ethics. i've seen very few truly oh man ethical people i know you know, know. what i'm saying you right. hear the word ethical but but how many people can you list who are actually like ethical people no you know what i'm saying <laughs> I mean, <laughs> by the standard, <laughs> excuse me, by the standard of what I learned ethics was in college and probably what you taught, <laughs> very few ethical people. Yeah. Very few. Nah. It's all, it's all subjective. This makes me feel bad. I don't like seeing this. I don't like seeing animals get killed. I don't like seeing um, artists get their work store l- stolen if it's AI. It's, it's that it's people ethics. When I think of ethics, true ethics, there is a standard in, in the field of ethics. That's what it was. It was moral. It was good, bad. This is clearly good. This is clearly bad. And there was an agreeance on what those things were. Now, everybody looks at everything from, uh, does this make me feel good? Yeah. 
lens and yeah, you because are, I, and you because are taught I, to honor because that. Because I swear, modern, modern ethics, yeah. what a lot of modern ethics is, and I see this a lot, uh, yeah. is two kinds. This is wrong right. from my local perspective, right. and therefore I either rail against it, become a hooligan about it, right. or I start smart assing it and quipping it up. Like so yeah, it's like it. it's it's one liner, you know, jab for jab type stuff. Right. I mean, and the thing is like, okay, so so the 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 standard of ethics now is is to respond to an ethical itch, issue with petulance. Okay. I mean right. I mean how is that but I I don't see how that's better. In fact, I don't see how it like advances policy. I don't it see, doesn't I do anything. It. it doesn't I don't do see anything. It. it just right? I mean you, all you, it does you claim is, ethics, but, is but if silence you're, the other yeah. person and I mean, it makes them even more resentful. Like it pushes them away from exactly. the table because you diminish their thing by calling them evil, by saying exactly. they're an idiot, by making exactly. light of it, by doing anything other than saying, oh, there might be some actual merit yeah. to what they're saying. You just say they're yeah. an idiot. They're yeah. wrong and they're stupid and they're, and they're unfair and biased and all these other yeah. names that you, you just shut it down and that's what we do now and yeah. we block and the conversation's over and mm -hmm. there's no there's no common discourse yeah if people are seeing things and, and that's i think that's the scariest thing about for me like someone who's actively been in the ai space mm -hmm. because you see people that are playing with this reality that are manipulating it with these tools and all this stuff and it's like mm -hmm. They're fine doing it because they're the ones creating it. But that's what I've seen in the last couple of months mm. is more people who are not in this technology bubble that are finding these technologies. They're finding AI and they're generating images and they're generating stuff. And they have no – because they're not creating the, the technology, they're just using it to misrepresent. And, to, and mm. this isn't everybody, but there's a class of people who are just like, hey, I can generate as many images as I want. I can generate as much text as I want. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Why wouldn't I? Yeah, there's nothing to stop me. Yeah, and so I I bring that up because it's these perspectives that are at odds with each other, but then there's no common agreed upon framework to yeah discuss the different sides. It's just oh they use AI art, they're evil, or mm -hmm. they hate AI art and they're luddites. They're totally going to get left behind. They're, yeah. they're, they're really mean. And and now I've I've seen both sides of it because I've yeah. been all in on AI, and then I've I've backed away. Like that's where I'm pretty much at now, to where I'm just using what I need to use. I'm not looking at anything new, mm -hmm. and I I see now the opposite side of people who are who are pro AI who tend to be very pushy. And then I've mm. seen the opposite side when I was in the technology last year to where it's like people, they actively hate you. Like they want mm. you to die because mm. you're using AI. Yeah. There, there's no middle ground. And yeah. and that's not just AI. That, that's politics. That's yeah. climate change. That's all these other things. And yeah. nothing gets done that way. Nothing changes. And that's mm -hmm. my, my concern us as a species going forward is that this this is the breakdown of society because not because of AI or because of climate change or these because of these individual issues. It's because we stopped talking to each other. And that mm. started with a lack of trust in mm. our institutions and mm. our fellow humans because she's a woman and I feel like I can't talk to her because I might get a charge. She feels like she can't talk to me because she might get hurt, get raped, get whatever, mm -hmm. something vile and mean. And this is where we're, we're at, where a lot of people do think like this to where yeah. it's like, it's not even worth it to engage because I don't even want to take the risk of, and we've talked about this before, how people will, will avoid talking to us because we're black. And it's like, oh, well, you don't know if you're one of those black people to where you're going to get all offended and, or you're going to be ignorant or, or something like that. They don't know. So they're just like, they just rather avoid you. Yeah. And this goes for both sides. So it's, 
it's it's a struggle, man. And this is where I go back to taking it back to the men and women thing. It's like we as men, we are less likely to to talk about mm -hmm. these things openly like we are doing. And I'm glad we're having this yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um, Because we just just on the nature of being men, that's just not yeah with our you know with our like, primary masculine energy yeah that's just not how we operate that's not yeah. how we think to operate like you and i can both sit at our desk and just work mm -hmm. day in day out like i'm not saying women can't do that either i'm just saying like that is a lot of guys can do that they can just maybe it's not at their desk maybe it's in their shop maybe it's on the court or on the field they can just grind 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 yeah and it, it, it's it's safer it's become safer to do it's, it that it's way easy. i mean yeah. like nobody gonna bother like, you you're sitting there doing your nobody's thing. nobody's attacking you for something that's just right. your thing that you know you don't have to politicize it right it's and, nothing what it is it's just you know, work it's earlier study, i was it's gonna play. ask yeah. I, earlier i was gonna ask like uh you know what happened to all the men like where are they like in terms of and and i, I mentioned this mean. in one of the books it's like you know yeah. like in terms of making stuff happen or being in the mm -hmm. world or you know like stuff like that where are they and i mean they're kind of there, but if you okay, take out all the actors, <laughs> right? <laughs> then yeah. we, you know, right? And I, I would realize, like, man, around where I live, they're hunting and fishing. Right. They're hunting and fishing and fishing and hunting, and right. and it's a yeah. They it's a, it's like away. just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone. And and, and I my, and I get know. the retreat. I understand the retreat, yeah. but that's and I remember watching a video at some point last year talking about this issue to where. Because we, a lot of men feel unsafe yep. engaging with oh, yeah. society because of all the stuff we've oh, talked yeah. about. Oh, yeah. yeah they yeah. they tend to retreat. Mm -hmm. And, but that's, retreat is not what we need, though. We don't need retreat. We need yeah. men r willing to, you know, come up, bring up other men, bring up boys and yes. help the women. And that's the we, thing. A lot of women have, a lot of women have said, well, they're not going to do it. So then that's what it is. Like they they're like, well, yeah. they're not gonna help me raise these kids. I gotta raise them on my own. They're, we, they're not gonna help do me do that. This. But yeah. but I think that that unfortunately now there's nothing to bring to the table. And so yeah. you got a lot of men who maybe maybe we do need more fathers or something like that. But yeah, definitely. You can't be a father when you're still a boy. You can't I know, that. right. And then so, so that goes back to that walks if you walk the problem back to like yeah. you talked about, like the the uh, feminization of culture, this kind of expansion of this new type of man that's supposed to be in his feelings, but at the same time still be a version of a man. Yeah. What does that look like? That hasn't been clearly defined. We've talked about this. Well, actually, one of the first episodes I think, we talked about. I think this, the but... only man that's really allowed to do that is a pretty one or a rich one. I'm just being uh, I'm being facetious, I know, I know but I'm, I'm, I'm being yeah. real though. It makes I'm it being real though. damn sure it makes it easier. I mean, those those are the only ones who really still get to act like men. I think right because if you if you not if you're not either of those, then, yeah, and uh, then you uh, know the alarms go up, and and if you're not yeah. both of those, uh, I, oh my god, good luck to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I yeah, mean, my most annoying trend about men in the last decade, or maybe even 15 years, it goes back to, is the 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 popularization of the man child. And the man child has right. always kind of been around, yeah. But I feel like with YouTube, you see like you know these these guys that are just in there, you know, whether it's dude. sports or yeah. video games. Hey, or... dude, I'm going to tell you about this thing. I it, it, really uh, it doesn't matter know. what it yeah. is. It could no I've seen what it, it and is. it I ranges. That, it, it could be any that, any domain. Yeah. Sports, video mm -hmm. games, finance, mm -hmm. the domain. It doesn't matter. But whatever what? that thing is. What? Oh, yeah, and and, and yeah. it's not just that culture. I know what you're talking about, but it, I'm you know? I'm extrapolating to any domain yeah. to where you've got you've got paraphernalia of that domain, and that's where you. It's the man cave, but it's not yeah, just TV yeah, and yeah. video games. Yeah, that has yeah. been. That's why I, I think of like the man child, and maybe that's not a, the right way to put it, but. That's what I think of. You, you just kind of live there. And even if you're on YouTube or whatever, then you just kind of live in that domain. And that's yeah. and that's fine. You know, that's OK. Yeah. But. The it, it's a very. Insular place, it's a very small you know, type of place. I, and, and the guys that are 
out there, the pioneers that you looked up to, mm. they're 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 fewer. They're oh, yeah. they're they're fewer. Oh yeah, they're they're fewer. Well, and, and we people. still think, and it's unfortunately because <laughs> we 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 probably think that you know Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos are right, pioneers yeah, yeah. as we far as it guys, is. Yeah. And so it's money, it's kind yeah. of like money, space, mm -hmm. power, right. fame, and yeah. it's already it's been done. And and the tricky thing for I can I can only speak for myself, but I probably speak for a lot of men too, is that you know as a straight arrow, you don't want to go to a place where it's already been done. I mean, you know, right? I, yeah. Hey, you know, as I'm trying right. to, you know, this is a becomes a dick measuring contest. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I mean, I can't compete with the, that that calf rocket over there. I mean, look right, at right. it. You I know, know. You literally <laughs> so got I a feel... flying dick. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to be in that spot. I can't be a man in that space. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pup compared to that yeah. rocket. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so the notion of asserting, and I'm telling you, like, yeah, this yeah, is how yeah. I feel personally I, I like about that. creative like stuff. Because uh, I'm not about analogy. to, like, you know, I'm not about to go toe to toe with some cat who clearly, clearly, clearly bad. I just, it don't make me feel good. Right. That's that's. That's that's my own man thinking. Now I got plenty of stuff that is my own, right? Mm. But but these are the kinds of things to where I think a a, a newer kind of psychology for mm. for people, yeah. not just men, not just women. Right. I mean, because you can, I mean, I, I could tell you right here that you know how that guy became a perpetrator. His space closed in on him. Mm. Friends of friends of friends. He saw that he was being put mm. in a corner. He couldn't assert. He mm -hmm. couldn't talk back without, you know, father getting involved and friends getting involved and right. possibly getting accused of something with the threat of something. He mm -hmm. couldn't do a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do it, but he couldn't earn enough and he couldn't earn it fast enough. And he couldn't control who accepted his application. He couldn't mm -hmm. control society and his socioeconomic status. He couldn't make the car shinier, but he's supposed to be a man. And somehow he's supposed to he's supposed to d d treat his woman like a queen, hmm. but he doesn't have any right. prince or duke powers. He's got right. nothing. So how's he going to do it when his queen is basically his master? Right. <laughs> I mean, how's he going to do that? She mm -hmm. wants to be she wants to be elevated by him, but she also wants to step on him in his mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. That's not what she's actually doing. But the walls mm -hmm. closed in. He felt trapped, and like any caged animal, that's what he did. Right. I yeah. mean that that that's that's, and this is this is for internal frustration stuff like that. No, mm -hmm. it's not. It's not my story. It's not anything like that. But you feel when you're a male mm -hmm. and you being asked to shut the fuck up, but mm -hmm. also say the perfect thing. Right. You know, reach yeah. the very top. But here, I'm going to trip you up because you're not getting there at you know, the way I want you to do it. Right. That just, yeah. That it can't ain't got no options. He, he ain't got no options. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just, and, and again, this doesn't excuse anyone. Right. But if you want to know how the perpetrator started, it was, he started there. Right. It, that's one of the ways in which he started. If you see a problem, a, a real easy thing to do might be to kind of say, well, wait a minute. What around here is, is, is trapping you know, this person or making them go there. I mean, it's, but the thing is like now, if I bring this conversation to somebody mm -hmm. who's not listening or whatever, they go straight from, you're defending the abuser. I'm like, right, yeah, yeah. no, I'm explaining how the abuser is made. Right. And if you want to do something about it, then here are many areas where you can look at it. Yeah. Maybe you can't. Maybe he can't, but I mean, for God's sakes, if we don't look at it at all and we go straight to the offense, then I mean, we're right. Fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's being offended. <laughs> people, I feel like in general, people are just too easily offended. These yeah. Days. And I feel like they're waiting yeah. to, because it, it, somebody mm -hmm. put this, somebody put it pretty simply on, on Twitter. I saw, uh, to be oppressed is seen in a lot of people's minds these days as virtuous. Mm -hmm. If you're, yeah. uh, you know, because if you're oppressed, then you automatically have 
an oppressor. You have an oppressor. And so it's easy a, to you have a fight. apply this, uh -huh. this black and white framework. Well, if they're oppressing uh -huh. me, they're bad. Mm hmm. And so, and, 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 that, and you know, there's any and all, you know, compensatory tactics are justified, and right, exactly, will still be on my side, and and then it's and a Marvel it'll... movie, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it's that simple. Yo, <laughs> it's a comic book. If I'm a, if I'm oppressed, it's a Marvel movie. Yo, right. It's easy. <laughs> there's a bad guy. There's a villain to be slain, and yes. I'm the hero, yeah. and I'm yeah. oppressed, and yeah. that narrative has permeated society yeah from, and it's not just women yeah it's men it's it's white men who are yeah. who justifiably so feel attacked in this last mm -hmm. era in these last yeah. decade or so because it white has shaming. i'm telling yeah, you it, it is a, it yeah. is a thing it is a thing yes it and, is. and and it's to the point to where everybody is a victim mm -hmm. nobody's a hero and I think that is a terrible place. Spider Man. <laughs> Spider Man. This is exactly what I saw. I said, this man, is Spider Man. This is Tobey Maguire. Spider Man. Man. Come on, man. Pick your put put your pants back on. Man. This is sad. This is right. sad. You're and me so sad. I'm like, if everybody is a victim, <laughs> wait. I'm like, wait a minute now. Everybody can't be a victim up in here. Yeah. No, but they can though. <laughs> but but they, they can. And, and that is <laughs> no. and that no, I, is. I know that, what you mean. Though. You know what I mean though. Yeah. People will are yeah. quick to go to the offense because. Because when you say you're offended, you automatically are saying to yourself, I'm being oppressed. Just like that yeah. lady on my TikTok who said she was offended by me saying this book is written for females. What the fuck you, is that? You were, you were saying like, who the audience was and she didn't like that. I was stating a fact. Like, <laughs> yeah. just read the back of the book. This like, is the target audience, yeah. yeah. Ask any man, would you read this book? Bro, nah. would I say no. <laughs> nah, nah. Nah, I wouldn't. I'm good. <laughs> Nah, nah. ask any man like it's pretty <laughs> obvious but she got offended and so or she claimed to be offended and so that's what i think the offend the the if when you claim to be offended you are automatically saying somebody has asserted something over me or has said something yeah. that has made me feel bad and i want some at the minimum i want them to know that they offended me they should feel bad yes. that mm -hmm. they offended me yeah and that you know it's and so and and this is my problem with being on social media i do right, feel right. bad when i when i offend anybody and i i can't it's, it's i got over that know, real i can't quick. take it because i of can't this. take it i got over that real quick because everybody it's, yeah you can be totally, offended you can take be, totally different approaches you to can that say you, you can say you know, i ate toast this morning somebody be offended you know. because i like biscuits <laughs> <laughs> and you ate toast Biscuits, a... bitch. Right. I, I, I biscuits, bitch. Post. Post you. Know you. Post you. Thumbs down. You can one star. You can one literally. Star. And now a hundred people will never see your stuff because you can literally. No. And I've seen it, bro. I've seen it. I've seen biscuits, people the celebrate their wins. Yeah. People celebrate yeah. getting engaged, getting married getting yeah. divorced whatever some type of milestone and there is one person <laughs> that says yeah. not that i'm offended but they will come with some shade yeah they will oh, say yeah. well you should have stayed in the marriage why didn't you try and work it out or you shouldn't get married look you've shackled yourself down look what's happening yeah man I, you know like that you know, like, I, I i feel bad because because deep down in my mind i'm like if i could only talk to you right I could win you over, and, and that's and the I'm, problem. I'm, I'm, I'm you never will, I and, and that's no, where I go can't. back. You won't. You they won't. They won't listen. So they won't give you the time of day. On, I don't just, be going on social media. Just that's, a, get, that's a. They just want to get validated. So anyway, we got a minute. Battle. I'm gonna end we do. this episode. We're gonna actually. We're gonna. We're gonna actually end here because we could just keep going. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This I I love this conversation, man, because we don't. And I love you for for listening to to having this conversation with me, man, because we really don't talk enough as men. We don't yeah. talk because it, it's not safe to yep. outside of certain spaces. And we just have been trained to know that don't say anything about being exclusively male or whatever, because mm -hmm. you're going to, you're putting down women when you do that. And yeah. we need to get over that. It doesn't help. This has been two brothers talking. Thanks for listening or watching us on YouTube oh, yeah. now and yeah. check out my website, keithhayden.net. Ajani is a ghost. If you want to get in contact with him, go through me. But yep. 
Check us out in the next episode. See ya. See y'all.